and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Kindred Zoe. This is a deck that, you know, it is meme tier Tuesday, so we're going to be playing it here over in normal, but it looks really good. It looks like a deck that should be played over in ranked. So I'm expecting some good stuff for this. This is going to be kind of like a control deck using Shadow Isles and Targon. Um, we're going to have a, a good amount of Celestials from the super cool star charts and Spacey Sketchers and a Solari Priestess and some star shapings. So we'll have Celestials in here. We'll have Kindred cleaning stuff up. And we're going to have card advantage with like Spirit Leech drawing two and uh, Glimpse Beyond drawing cards. And then we'll have like a Guiding Touch of Pell Cascade to draw cards. This is a kind of deck that you do want a lot of like different one ofs because this is going to be a slower control deck. All the games are going to be different. So you're going to want to have access to different tools uh, depending on what the game looks like and what the circumstances for the turn. And then, of course, you're you're certainly rewarded for playing cards of different names with Zoe, of course. And we're going to be trying to level up Zoe, trying to level up our Kindred. Kindred, of course, wants us to slay units to be able to mark the weakest enemies from our opponent. And remember, that doesn't mean that you have to slay your opponent's units. You can, but you don't have to. You can slay your own units. And so that's really important in a Shadow Isles region. That's why we're going to be playing something like three hapless aristocrats. We'll have these fading icons in here. They'll give us a bunch of one health targets that are easy to slay. And we can do that by playing Glimpse Beyond or by playing Spirit Leech. But it's not easy to like, you know, have Kindred to play and then play Spirit Leech like the same turn. But what is easy is playing Unspeakable Horror or Vile Feast. And so we can use those on our own units and slay our own units with these uh, one damage spells. And then we'll mark the weakest enemy um, over on the other side and Kindred will take care of that. We got one Lambs of Spite in here to be able to protect Zoe or allow Zoe to block um, a different elusive or something like that. Know, it's, just, it's just a little one of in here that, that can be useful at times. Uh, let's see. We have some other protection for Zoe, but yeah, like, you know, like we're going to want to protect our champions, both Zoe and Kindred. Star Shaping can heal them. Same with the Guiding Touch. All right, so let's get to it. Let's give it a try. Let's play some Kindred Zoe. We'll go play our five games. Just playing one over in normal to start with. If we do go 4 and 0, oh, we'll try for the 5-0 oh in ranked. Like we did with, with Draven Jarvan earlier. Alright, so I'm not sure how well we'll be able to stop the Watcher combo as far as matchups that we wanted to face. This is probably not exactly it. Hush does kind of stop the Watcher, I guess, for a turn. Good. Good, got the turn one, Zoe. If I had a Pill Cascade in hand, I would wait till turn 2 to play Zoe, but I don't, so we'll just play it right away. So, Mastered Metadex in normal. Nothing escapes my life. All right, Crescent Strike stops Watcher. I was honestly hoping for uh, Moon Glow. I want to put Moon Glow on Zoe. Moon Silver. In the portal. In the portal. Do I want to play kin Kindred right now? I think so. Might as well. You think this is a 30-70 matchup? That doesn't sound like very good odds. What do I think about Swain as a real deck with Sumpworks map for Swain? I don't mind it. I think that's just a one of. I wouldn't play more than one Sumpworks map. But I think that can be a really good one of as, um, you know, something that, you know, has really high potential, of course. Now. 
Yeah, I expected something like that. We really need to find a Moonglow in one of our three, uh, you know, ways to find it. We didn't find a single one. Come on, play Avalanche. Avalanche. I love how Trundle yells out Avalanche. It's just so funny. That's Trundle, right? Not Trindamir? I think it is. I think it's pretty sure it's Trundle. Avalanche. <laughs> it cracks me up. Darn. They didn't do it. Yeah, it is Trundle. <laughs> Use one of our hapless aristocrats for these spirit leeches. But I also have nine cards in hand. Sparkly. Boo. I could glimpse beyond. Hey, Game Boy Rob with the raid. Welcome everybody from Game Boy Rob stream. We're playing some mean tier decks right now. We got some Zoe Kindred. We're playing against Lysandra Trundle. Um, if I do this, three, six, seven, I have six mana left. Yeah, we can do this. We of course don't mark anything right now. That's that's a thing. But we can draw something that costs less, that helps our spirit leech out. Like a hapless aristocrat. Hey, we got a brand new tier one sub. Y'all let's get some hype going. Therefore our new new tier one sub. Uh I guess I'm passing. I mean, I could slam down Hapless Aristocrat, but... Alright, let's mark our, our sub goal. Getting that 2 out of 5. Steinbrand. Okay, cool. Kindred Zoe is your favorite deck of the season? Yeah, okay, I, I did talk about this before, that this one could pro... Like, this, this one should really be a ranked deck. Um, the person that donated said just go ahead, you know, hadn't really played it too much before and said just, you know, play it a meme tier to begin with, but this, this deck looks good. This one looks like it, this could be a, a ranked deck for sure. Yeah, we could play it in ranked, but we're just doing other, like the other decks today, we're just doing meme tier, so we're just playing it over there today. Still have eight mana in the attack token. Should have played Spirit Leech. But I kind of do have too many cards in hand anyway. So I guess it's okay. I kind of have too many cards in hand. Okay, 
So I'm just going to save the other Kindred. For right now. Okay, so we know this card over here is Spectral Matron. They only have three other cards. That's not many. That's really not many. Yeah, these are classic Targon problems. What do I do? I have, I have all these, you know, I have ten cards every single turn. So I have to, you know, think for five minutes, like, what am I going to do every turn? I, I can't play everything. Wow. That is what we call desperation. So, middle card is the Spectral Matron. I don't know what they, I don't know what they have against that goat. So that probably means no ruination in hand if they are willing to just throw a vengeance away on a goat. Of course, I can also lambs or spite, like you know, and make the six one so it can't die. And now I can like Spirit Leech, a glimpse beyond it, draw some more cards. Shine once more before the end. Safeguard our homes. They just want to draw a card. I'll let them. They'll have a blocker now. Because I don't think they have Ruination. I don't think they do. They got vengeance. Man, fading icon with <laughs> with cosmic inspiration is kind of busted. Requires concentration. Down to three. They have triple vengeance. Of course, keeping all these things, all I'm gonna have Hush, Crescent Strike, Crescent Strike, Hush, all of them available because we know that they have Spectral Matron Watcher. So we gonna be stopping that. That egg, did it move? Um, do I want to cycle? I guess. I'm just going to cycle and just draw a new card. I could have dealt one damage to them. Oh well. Bad watchers. 
The real problem is if both of those are, okay. So I could go Vengeance and just kill that Watcher, but if both of these are Fading Memories, which they've already played one Fading Memories, if they're both Fading Memories, we lose if I do that. So the safer play is just to hush it. There's no way they're both Fading Memories, right? Because like the first Fading Memories I can hush. Yeah. Yeah, Targon, Targon has a lot of good tools against uh, the Watcher, that's for sure. They didn't seem to have a great hand against us, too. They had all sorts of Blighted Ravines and Withering Whales, and I didn't even have like, much stuff for them to kill most of the time. Uh, but anywho, this looks like a pretty good hand to keep against Thresh Nessus. Basically turn on Nightfall for Unspeakable Horror in case we want to play Unspeakable Horror. Got him. That's why you kill him during combat. Always kill him during combat. Serpent, try to kill the Reaper. You know, my danger noodle. Kill the Reaper. And of course, I, I don't really want to give them a slay with like trading Aristocrat for Spiderling. Not draw two cards. That is not the Cloven way, drawing two cards. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and block and Glimpse Beyond on my side. Again, keep their Slay count down. Nightfall, stun an enemy. If it's a follower, stun it again at the next round start. Wow. Wow. We using Ride of Negations over here? Ride of Negation? Can we talk about the same thing? Ride negation? Over here? On that? Yeah. Sorry, Zoes. Ozo's. They kill my Zoe.
Thresh is going to be tough. I don't really have anything for Thresh right now. Or do I? No, I really don't right now. Moonglow Kindred? Or the Charger? Do I want a Moonglow Kindred? Yeah. I guess that's not bad. Yeah, maybe stop the Black Spear from happening. Right now, they could Atrocity and kill Kindred, but I don't think they're going to do that, but they could. Oh, we have the Bonk. I guess I wasn't really considering that as, like, cards they play, right? Because they don't play the box, but it's Thresh's champion spell. If they have Withering Wheel, I'm I'm in a lot of trouble, but I'm not playing around it. So I don't think they have it. Ah! Keep on having more Thresh. Okay. Moonglow or Trickster? That's a good vengeance draw. If only mortals were not driven by avarice and hatred. That's a really bad Bakai Sand Spinner draw. <laughs> to ruin. This too shall end. Eat him up, Kindred. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess Kindred won't eat it up. They play their own Ravenous Butcher. Good draw, good draw. Draw two pretty useful. Maybe I should be using the Pale Cascade. The cycle begins He thinks he understands. Fools. Yeah, I probably should have used the Pale Cascade. Oh, why don't I use it on the Kindred to heal the Kindred? I obviously should have. So they've had two Nasus, three Thresh so far. So they've had five champions. And you can see. 2 0. Oh. Sivir Renekton. Yeah, that's true. Good showing. Yeah, we have beaten two very good tier one decks, right? With Thresh Nasus and uh, Watcher combo. We have beaten two very good decks so far. Well, Mulligan, Star Shaping, keep the rest. Maybe a tad slow. Zoe helps out. Ooh, fading Icon also helps out. So, two good draws. Good Mulligan on the Star Shaping, looking for those. You know, basically, Hush is a card that I kind of want to keep against Renekton, because Renekton can be, like, really big and overwhelming. But I want to attack. 
Don't tell me what I can and cannot do. I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. Just kidding. Um, I don't think I'll trade my 3-1 for that thing. We'll, I'll keep my 3-1 back. <laughs> yeah, I do oftentimes get the better win rates with the meme tier days than the meta decks. Now, I, I am playing in normal instead of Masters rank, and there, that does make a big difference, and that is a, a big reason why, but still, um, it is enjoyable to uh, have that be the case. Do I want Golden Sista? <sighs> no, I think we've got to be the Traveler. I am the Traveler. I am the most boring character, the Traveler. I have so many things I want to do. What do I do? <laughs> uh, I guess we. I don't know. That's probably not even worth it. Because basically, what I'm worried about is. Okay, well, that's that's definitely something to worry about. But what what I was worried about was quicksand, right? Like I could attack the quicksand. Look within. Enough. Cool. I'll take that trade. My ends. As I live, all will die. That's a lot to die. I can hush my own Zoe to keep it from having vulnerable for a turn. I can sleepy trouble bubble. And then Patty Cake or whatever this thing's called. Paddle Star. Five mana to kill the Renekton. Probably do that. That kills my Zoe. And I put Shuffle another Zoe back in. It's probably a thing to do, though. How's it going? Yeah, it's probably a thing to do. <laughs> Paddle Star, yeah. That's it. I can remember it. Patty cake. <laughs> turn it like so. Sorry, Zoes. They did have the if they did have the one mana card to save at the plus three plus one, we'd have the vile feast. Yeah, that was that was a good turn for them. I'm good on them. I guess I can go down to seven. Man, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have eight mana next turn. Speak, stars. Speak, I say. Three, six, seven, eight. So I'm only gonna get two gems. Okay, I have room for all three gems. Why is that 2 2 blocking? Oh. 
Because obviously they're going to use both of these lucky finds on one of those things. I don't think they pass also, do they? I guess it's a possibility. Well, we'll see. They don't pass, do they? Nah, too greedy. They should pass, they're too greedy. Now this turn we'll go Unspeakable Horror Vengeance on the Rune Runner. Didn't pass the turn, they're a little too greedy. Of course I have all these like hushes and everything. We should be good. We got you know Targon problems. Way too many cards to play. Not enough time to play them. Targon problems. Quicksand. That's alright. We got Meme Tier Tuesday. Oh no, they quicksand it and then block something else. Oh, poor opponent. Don't touch it. They're trying to do cool Sharima stuff and we're just Targon over here just ruin ruining their fun. <laughs> yeah, so far so good. Game's been going real well today. I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. Uh, well, let's throw this thing out there. Let's see what we get. This is a library. Chronomancer. You need a hush. Didn't you see that Xenotype researcher you played earlier? In here, because of the library. So just need silence. That's a good draw. Pride was my end, as it will be yours. As it will be yours. Uh, let's start here. I assume we have another celestial card, don't we? Do we? We don't have another celestial card. Oh well, I guess I should have made that assumption. Hmm. Could be worse. Alright, so I'm kind of at the point of the game where I'm just, like, throwing stuff around. Because it doesn't really matter anymore. I should have taken the 10-mana uh, one. It can be undone. But, oh well. Not sure what this attack's all about. <laughs> We're just playing random stuff. Let's go. See? Told you we are going to have a Celestial card. Space Sketcher. That's a Celestial card. In the making. No! I was going to cast my... No, I want cosmic inspiration. I need some inspiration in our library. 
I guess we'll just take the victory. Okay, we got Taric Lux. That's a cool combination. So when it, with Taric, whenever you do play a spell that targets the Taric, and then the Taric copies it over, that is casting the spell again, so that does count as mana for leveling up Lux. So a cool little combination we got here. We're going to mulligan the Lamb's Respite, and I guess that's it. I don't know. I could see maybe mulliganing one of these two, because we have the other one. You know, look for a Zoe. Ooh, yeah, this could be Unyielding Spirit. On Taric, copy Unyielding Spirit. Get two final sparks. That'd be pretty sweet. You must know me, one. And opponents the goat. Tradesies. Tradesies. So probably wanting that gem maybe for Terra? Question mark. <laughs> Just forty more turns of attack one, and we're gonna win. We'll be five and zero. Yeah. So if this works out, we're going to basically double our hand size from 4 to 7. Alright, we're going to be Dusk Riding Dirty. Get him, Kindred. Pro tip here, Sunburst silences and then deal six. So if they capture something, like if they get a detain and they capture something, don't silence it and then kill it. Because <laughs> then the silence, you won't get your thing back. So don't do that. This could definitely be like they're going to be single combating. I can't really stop that though. I hope not. I hope it was just like wanting like a barrier or something. Yeah, single combat. I could have stopped it, I guess, by you know like holding up Pell Cascade and not doing the whole Vile Feast thing and not being all cute. This, however, is a good card to silence and then kill. Mm. Alright, they got a gem. Ooh, that thing is tough. Do I need another hapless aristocrat? Probably not. And here's where I paint my constellation. Could have maybe ditch the withering whale as well. I'm glad they're not using Pill Cascade when they have Taric to be able to draw two. And definitely glad we ditched the Hapless Earth Scrat because we found Hapless Earth Scrat number three. What are we doing over here? We've drawn three Hapless Aristocrats and zero Zoes. <laughs> That's not the way it's supposed to be. There we go. It's supposed to go the other way around. Uh, I don't know. Eh, go to 12. I don't know, it's just 12. 
Falls, whatever. saying going to the library Enter, traveler, and stop staring. so yeah two lux down haven't seen a Tarek yet I think they're gonna be going sharp sight is my guess what are you at you like a four five If it could be judgment. Yeah, they could be a judgment deck. Yeah, it counts itself so it'd be a five five. Yeah. Ooh, no judgment. We got some gems. Oh, is it they who endure a Zier deck? That's that's what that was. Sweet. Where are you at? Four. Always single combat. Or at least that's two single combats. I guess that's the good news. Bad news is my hand's kind of bad. We know that they have it's a good celestial. They really, sh like, there's no difference between being at 17 and being at 19. They really should have healed their 5-3. Oh, Beauty and life. Certainly running out of steam. Really? Now they summon Valor right after that? That's perfect timing by them. It's going to be our third Zoe.
I'll we'll probably just throw a 1 1 in front of the 7 7, I guess. Still have three cards over there. I just have a hapless aristocrat and then one other card. They still have two cards to my zero. Yeah, we are doing bad with these draws. At least we're out of Mountain Goats, we're out of Hapless Aristocrats, we can't draw any more of either of those. I think we're out of Spacey Sketchers also. From one of our two Fading Icons, one Mentor of the Stones. We're kind of out of like all of the bottom end stuff now. Man, I was at nine. I guess Moon Silver? I need Moon Silver. We were so close! Like, depending on what they play, I may need Equinox. The Serpent does, like, the best at, like, trying to kill Taric. They're so close at 9. Oh, that's a great card. Man, I'd love to get a Solari Priestess. Or a star shaping. We'll get a star shaping. Maybe Unspeakable Horror will create Eclipse Dragon and get us some good stuff. Oh, that's a great card. Alright, so if it's Taric, it's plus three, plus three to both of those. If it's Lux, that's not great. Okay, good draw. We're gonna start here. I think it's Taric for how they, you know, if it was Lux, I think they would have played Lux, but they didn't play it, so I think it's Taric. Good draw. We've got the star shaping. Okay, never mind. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I'm supposed to just take the 9 mana Obliterate 2, but I don't behold another Celestial besides just the Serpent that I want to use this turn. And Living Legends can just, you know, completely refill my hand, basically, of stuff to do. It can, found, it can find something pretty good. Not gonna let Pale Cascade keep that alive. Or something like that. Any of its star shaping. Or sorry, it's sharp sight. I was gonna say if it's sharp sight, I still have this, but. Okay, well. Concerted Strike it is. Concerted Strike, of course, gives them the gem, which the gem does level up the Lux. I wish that was the other Taric, not another Lux. Up their day. 
Unyielding. Never submit. There is nowhere left to go but up. Oh, yeah, I should have unspeakable my own serpent. Yeah, y'all are right. Y'all are definitely right. I should have done that. Yeah, because that would have got rid of two targets for the Tarek and everything. That was... Yeah, y'all are completely right. I should have done that. That was definitely the play. Yeah, that was definitely the play. I don't know how much I need to empty my hand for these Living Legends. Okay, so I guess our plan is the Destroya. I guess that's the plan. And, you know, we have the Double Moon Silver. That's going to grow this even more. Only one card in hand that can maybe save them. No more I mean, they can block with... They have to block with Lux. I don't think any... I don't think a different block saves them, right? Because this is going to be 16... Uh, they're, they're not going to play anything else, so... So 17... So it has to be Lux the blocks. Yes, no, go back. No, go block with that 5-5. Five five. Alright, so we are able to kill Lux. What can you do, Kindred? Wow, what a draw, Pill Cascade. Being the draw two and burst speed and everything. Not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, they have a very cool deck for sure. So Unspeakable Horror can do one damage to them, put them down to two, or put them down to one. Or I kill two things. Yeah, it's so close, right? Like we go down to one, but like I could, I could drain them down to one. Our best possible hits like Doom Beast, the drain two. Unto Dusk, that's just a draw card. Uh, well, we have nightfall effects in here. Nothing. 
Yeah, I was trying to. I thought it was just more likely that we like you know that we kill that thing, then kill this thing, and then and then use our kindred to help stabilize like with the nightfall card that we have and stuff. I thought that was more likely than drawing our second. Like there's only two unspeakable horrors in the deck. Um. Is it time? Not yet. We must be patient. I'm Well, 18-7? Anybody? And good thing I didn't play the Unto Dusk, right? Because if I, if I would have played the Unto Dusk, we wouldn't have had the mana for that. We needed that extra, we needed that extra mana, right? The Unto Dusk would have lost us that game. Wow. All right, we're back to being 4-0 here with our meme tier deck. Y'all know what that means. That means that we're going on over to ranked to try to finish out the 5-0. So here we go. We're taking Kindred Zoe over to ranked. NASA Swain. I like it. That's a cool combination. So we can kind of protect Zoe with Lamb's Respite, but not really. But kind of. I think I'm going to actually just be discarding the Lamb's Respite to the Spacey Sketcher. Potentially. IDK. Well, this wasn't slow speed. The Rock Hopper. The Hopper of Rocks. All right, you got me. I think I should have discarded the Lamb's Respite. Plan on going turn four Kindred. Ooh, we can have Bastion next turn. Ugh. I'm gonna make my Kindred vulnerable. Just play Mentor the Stones. Just save my spell mana, I guess. That was not a good turn for me. Not a good turn. Enter, that rock hopper just threw me off so much. That second rock hopper, that really ruined my plans. Crazy how much, like, they probably don't realize how how much that card has done for them. But that slowed me down, like, two whole turns. Now we're back to, like, the same spot we were two turns ago. They're just gonna pass? I'm not sure why. Gold, crystals. I will run you over. That was not a good Nocturne Fervor for them. Cause that d like, that doesn't kill my mentor. So I'm kind of glad about that. I don't have to, like, have, like, the whole hand space problems with, like, the mentor. Shall we, dear wolf? I'm ready, little lamb. 
So I do have <coughs> I have Bastion to protect Kindred. Hey, stop. Come here. I've been petting you this whole time. I stop petting you for a minute and you start barking. I assume that stops that because it's one skill. But no, I was not expecting Basilisk Bloodseeker. I can't say that was a card that I was expecting. Nasus and Swain. I was doing that in hopes of being able to lambs or spite the mentor of the stones. Should be attacking the other way around, but I guess they would just block the other way around. Wouldn't matter. Yeah, it wouldn't matter. But that's gonna be halfway towards our kindred level up. I just want to keep some burst available for these things. That's the card I don't have good answers to right now. Do I have another celestial for the supernova? Not exactly. I really should have discarded the Lambs or Spite instead of the Super Cool Star Chart before. That was a big mistake by me. Because, unfortunately, Lambs or Spite <laughs> has two mana, no text. I kind of need to get it out of my hand. I'm going to be a 3-7. Why did I play that on Speakable Horror? Its heart beats fast now. It knows. I'm in a lot of trouble. I need the Sunburst to be Vengeance. There's a lot of times where Sunburst is better than Vengeance, but like this is a, a time where I need Vengeance. Well, that was nice of them, just playing a different Swain in hand so that they just told us that they have a Swain still in their hand. That was kind of, kind of them. I 
Kindred Spirit Journey. Artillery barrage! Such little lives. Gently. Never! Oh, well, we found a falling comet for that. Well, that's not great. Guess we still got an equinox. The cycle begins anew. He thinks he understands. Fool. Still stuns, still does the one damage to me and stuns. There's not that much point in playing that then. No. Not really any point in playing that then. Merely pawn in a greater game. It's what it's fast now. It knows. Oh come on, really? Why are they drawn so well? Cause this doesn't stop it, right? It still does the four damage. Yeah, so like I can't I can't do that, so what is waiting? Death on a small scale. They will have level up Nasus. And I will also be dead. I guess I'm just dead, aren't I? They just attack out, I'm dead. Leave them nothing. There's no better use for Spirit Journey. If I would use Spirit Journey as a pseudo stun, like you're saying, it's still like it takes away a blocker, it's the same thing. That the bacillus just killed me. They will try. We will remind them. Really, the the thing I needed to do there was discard the lands respite because the super cool star chart could have could have honestly helped, right? Like the super cool star chart could have been like an equinox or something like that that would have helped a few turns earlier when we weren't using mana. Um, so yeah, I would. I would highly recommend taking out Lamb's Respite. <laughs> Unfortunately, it, it kind of costs us that game of just being a completely dead card. And that happens sometimes, you know, you try you try cool cards and stuff, but yeah, that was <laughs> that card was just a waste. Um so there's there's no like shortage of different cards you can play. You can play, you know, Guiding Touch Pale Cast, you know, another Guiding Touch Pale Cascade, Vigor, another Unspeakable Horror, Vile Feast, like any of these would have been really nice. Another Bastion would have been really nice there, but just three star shapings, probably the way to go. That was also just kind of a weird matchup where, like, if this if this sunburst was a vengeance, honestly, I think we win that game because, like, we would have been able to vengeance the Leviathan, be able to mark something else. That would have made a huge difference, right? Like, so we we had to, we had some like unfortunate aspects of like our deck of like that got exploited, right? Like, that's one thing about like playing some kind of different cards is like sometimes like there's a lot of times where sunburst is amazing and you, and you really want sunburst, but that was just a you know a, a scenario where their units that we need to kill had more than six health and so that was kind of unfortunate like they had more than six health and so you know like leviathan had eight uh swain had seven and i couldn't i couldn't kill either leviathan or swain with the sunburst you know if they would have if they would have just played if they would have had nasus and they would have been playing nasus i would have been fine right we sunburst and nasus and like we're thinking wow wow sunburst is great look at that but that was just kind of like some some unfortunate scenarios with them um, but yeah, the, the decks still look good. The decks still look good for sure. I would, I'd probably just play a third star shaping over that. Um, that, that's where I would go. Star shaping was always like, that was always a card that we really wanted and really needed. And we kind of needed more celestial cards anyway to turn, like we need more celestial cards to turn on the, uh, the invoke stuff. So that, that's where I'd go over that lambs respite. 
Um, but yeah, so that was that was a, a winnable game if if things kind of went yeah you know, like if we played a little bit different cards right like that was um, yeah that was kind of unfortunate how our cards lined up there. Yeah, priestess is is pretty awesome. I could definitely see going two priestess one mentor. Mentor is not necessarily a card that you need multiple of, and we did see like the gems be kind of a problem in our hand sometimes. Mentor is good with Zoe. I don't want to take out Mentor completely. I do like Mentor. I think Mentor is a cool card. But yeah, I would probably rather have two Priestess, one one Mentor with that. But yeah, maybe that's the thing. Maybe, yeah, Minato says that Sunburst is good, but if you're but not with Shadow Isles, because Shadow Isles, you can just play Vengeance. And maybe that's the thing. Maybe maybe this should just be two Vengeance. Um, yeah, I could see that. Honestly, I really could because because we saw that like with the Watcher deck, right? Like we need we want vengeance for the Watcher. Sunburst doesn't kill the Watcher, so yeah, maybe since we're Shadow Isles, I, I could definitely see that. Like I like Sunburst a lot, but I can I can definitely hear the argument of um, Sunburst not being necessary when you're playing Shadow Isles because you can play Vengeance. I could yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, I think I think this deck is definitely good enough for ranked. I think that uh, it did look like a really good deck. I think that, um, you know, like we changed just a couple of cards, like what we did here. I think this would help a lot. Just play another Solari Priestess, play another Star Shaping, maybe play a Vengeance. But I think Kindred's good. I, th and I, d I do think that Kindred's definitely good enough for ranked. And I think this is a good Kindred deck, this Kindred Zoe, uh, you know, playing Targon, playing different um, card advantage that Targon provides. I like it. So I think, I think this is a good combination of champions. All right, so those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, as always, leave those comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. Um, you know, you are, be prepared to play some longer games. This was an hour and 36 minutes for this video. That's twice as long as a normal video. <laughs> so, you know, be prepared to play some very, very long games. But um, yeah, if you like Kindred, uh, give this deck a try. I think this was a good deck. All right, but anyway, that's it here for Kindred Zoe. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.